Uh, welcome to Carson Valley United Methodist Church. My name is Latu. I am your preacher and also uh, the pastor of this uh, great uh, congregation. And uh, I welcome you today on this second Sunday of Easter. Uh, we have a great service planned for you today. Uh, as you notice, uh, my partner in crime, Len, is not here. So if it's a little bit quiet, um, I ask you to not, do not be disturbed. It's, the, it's probably uh, just a temporary norm. But um, before we get started, I'd like to ask you to look at your bulletins. Uh, there were some uh, blue cards given to you. Please fill them out if you're able and, and just drop them in the baskets uh, right behind you at the exit doors. We also have prayer and praise cards in your pew. If you have a prayer or a praise that you want to share uh, with the church and also in the presence of God, uh, please fill them out and give them to me during the, the birthday bank hour. Thank you, Tammy, for bringing that. Um, I, I had the birthday bank last service, but I used a white, a white box. That had to be imp imp regular Methodist to be imperative So with, with uh, imp improvising some ideas. So um, today is the second Sunday of Easter. Uh, so on the second Sunday of Easter, we are, so after we've witnessed Lent, after 40 days, after we have um, endured a, and witnessed uh, the crucifixion and also witnessed the tomb as being empty, the question that we ask now is, what now? What now after all this? And so this theme for this new month is titled, How Shall We Live? How shall we live? How do you live knowing that Jesus died on the cross for you and was resurrected so that you may have everlasting life? Just knowing that, that your sins were cleared from an innocent man that was wrongfully prosecuted and had risen after three days so that you may have time to join in his father's hands. Just knowing that, that you're secure, it's, it's like a life insurance policy internally that, that it's given to you so that when it's time for you to cash in, knowing that someone will be there for you when it's your time to be called back home. Now before we get started uh, with our church service, I'd like to ask you to look at your neighbor left, right, front to, to the back and say, hello. <laughs> Uh, as we center ourselves for, for worship, I'd like to ask the church congregation to please stand. As we sing our song of gathering, lift high the cross.
As we come together this morning, we thank you, God, for your son, Jesus. The name above all names, Jesus Christ, who came, he came down from on high, who shared with no, I'm sorry, my eyes are watering. <laughs> The name above all names, Jesus Christ, who came down from on high, who shared with us all things. He suffered, died, and was sealed in a tomb. On the third day he rose. Jesus Christ took all our sins and bore them on the cross. Thank you, Lord. Let us embrace God's love and let the peace of Christ dwell in our hearts and minds today and every day. Amen. The reading today is John 20, 19 through 30, 31. Jesus appears to the disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house were where the disciples had been, they were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you do not forgive the sins, then they retain the sins of any. They are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of nails in his hands and put my fingers in the marks of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them. Then he said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it on my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are now written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Celebration of our children, we have Nancy and her puppet friend. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Hi. Oh, Bob. Such a kid. No, that would be a goat. <laughs> I'm not a kid. I'm a lamb. Anyway, um, good morning. Oh, good morning, Bob. How, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great today, but boy, yesterday wasn't so good. Oh, really? What happened? Well, we sheep were all out in the field like usual, and then all of a sudden we realized the shepherd wasn't there anymore. Apparently he'd forgotten his allergy medicine and he wasn't feeling well. So, so he left, and 
oh my goodness, we were all confused and, and scared and, and it, was, it wasn't good. Well, what happened? Oh, well then, Rex the Border Collie showed up. Yeah, yeah, and he, 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 he took care of us because, because he, he showed us a really good place to have grass and, and some fresh water and all, and, and he kept the coyotes away, and, and so then, then we felt better. So, so you felt peaceful then, right? You had peace? Well, yeah. You know, I think that maybe Jesus' disciples kind of felt the same way you sheep did when Jesus was crucified. Really? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, they were used to having Jesus tell them what to do and, and where they were going next, and kind of like your shepherd. Oh, yeah. And then he was crucified, and so he was gone, just like your shepherd was gone. Oh, I bet they were really worried and scared. Yeah, they were. And, and then Jesus showed up. Um, after he was crucified, he came to them. And you know what he said first off? You know? He said, peace be with you, because he knew how upset and worried they were. And he, he wanted them to remember that they could have peace with him. And he also said that he was sending the Holy Spirit to be with them, to guide them, just like Jesus had when he was on earth. That's pretty cool. So the Holy Spirit's kind of like Rex the Border Collie. Well, yeah, I, I guess so, kind of. In, in that the Holy Spirit can, can help us feel safe and guide us just like Rex did for you guys. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us, to give us peace in our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Get out of the way here. Uh, we celebrate every week uh, our birthdays, our anniversaries. It's just a, a way that we celebrate life, uh, knowing that God has keeps on blessing us. Even when we don't deserve being blessed, he still blesses us. And so uh, we celebrate that in our birthday bank ministry in which it feeds children around the world and fulfills all the assistive ministries with that purpose. And if you want something to, uh, if you want something to bring to God, or, or if you have something to bring to God uh, before for this birthday bank ministry and celebration, uh, please come forward and also bring your uh, prayer and praise cards with you. I feel someone coming behind me. <laughs> Hello. Well, he's coming, but we'll start with, uh... Our granddaughter Izzy turned 12 this week. 12. Happy birthday to her. My granddaughter, Sophia Rose, mm -hmm. and my late husband, his birthday was today. Happy oh. birthday. He's in heaven. Yes. Happy birthday to them. Cousin's birthday? Mm hmm. And I'll take that. Thank you. Happy birthday to your cousin. Pam's birthday is Thursday. Happy birthday, Pam. My grandnephew Tyler's birthday is. All right. Happy birthday to him. I have a birthday today. Another trip around the side. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. I got you. My niece is mm -hmm. going to be 35 this week. Oh, 35. Happy birthday to her. I don't feel that that old anymore. So, hey. Okay. This is for my granddaughter-in-law's birthday. All right, happy birthday to her. I like to say, oh, go, I got you. Uh, I like to say prayer for this birthday bank. Please say aye. aye. All right, let me say prayer. Uh, Jehovah Jireh, you are the Lord that provides. Uh, you provide us with uh, food, water, a roof over our head, family that loves us, friends that care about us a church that embraces us. We can name so much, but uh, we thank you, Lord, for all those essentials to survive in this world. And uh, we, also, uh, we also thank you for, for just keep, for the blessings that you keep on blessing us. And so we pay it forward in this birthday bank ministry and 
Uh, we pray that this Birthday Bank ministry feeds children around the world and also fulfills the purpose of that uh, assistant ministries. And so we ask you, Lord, to bless it so that it may remind us keep on giving because you have given us your all, your, your one and only son, Jesus Christ. And we ask you all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we are going into uh, tithes and offering. Uh, we don't pass a basket around, but we do have certain locations in the church on the side that you can give to the church and also in online giving on our church website. But we do offer a portion of our talent in which uh, today's offertory will be performed by Tamara Brewer. And it's, it's uh, titled Something About That Name, a medley. Jesus, 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 there's something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something Jesus, 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 there's something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. the spirit and his flow. Let him fill your heart, satisfy your soul. Oh, let him have the things that hold you, and his spirit like a dove will descend upon your life, make you whole. Jesus, Jesus, come and fill your lamps. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your lamps. Oh, come and sing the song with gladness as our hearts are filled with joy lift your hands a sweet surrender to his name oh give him all your tears of sadness give him all your years of pain and you'll enter into life jesus name jesus Jesus, come and fill 
God, that you fill our hearts and minds with you and with grace and your love. May we share our gifts in all that we are with each other and fill the hearts with our Lord's peace and love to bring glory to God and to let people know the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tamara. Uh, we are going into our prayers and praises. I will read the Prayers have been submitted to me, and I ask the church congregation to respond with, Lord, hear our prayers after I've read the prayers. I'll also read the praises submitted, and I ask the church congregation to respond with, we thank you, Lord, after I have read the praises. I'd like to ask uh, Tammy if she would uh, play a quick snippet to quiet our hearts and minds. Our first prayers from uh, Dennis and Nancy Lampson. Prayers for uh, the granddaughter who is dealing with multiple health issues. Uh, prayer request from uh, Don Jardine for a uh, individual named Ginger. She lives in Woodford's. Fell yesterday and uh, injured her knee. And may be going to the emergency room today. Uh, prayers a request from Linda McDowell, uh, just for prayers for healing. She is recovering from bronchitis. Uh, prayer request from Dick uh, Brownfield for uh, his son-in-law, Art Ro Roman, uh, who is facing uh, surgery this week, and so prayers for healing and recovery. Uh, prayer request for Kathy uh, and her family as, as they mourn the passing of her sister-in-law. Uh, prayer request from Ben and Donna for Bowling partner, family, and friends at uh, Donna at his at his party or his on this Easter passing oh party at his passing on Easter Sunday. Sorry, guys, my generation is not good at reading cursive. Uh, too much AI and too much typing, so I apologize on that. Uh, Prayers for, from Brenda, uh, prayers for nephew and niece-in-law, Eric and Sarah. The adoption of their second child fell through. And these are our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, for our praise, a praise from Pat. Pat? Pat's here? Okay. Hello, Pat. Uh, thanks be f uh, for getting me through a minor heart attack and... Huge number of clots in the lungs. Yeah, praise be to God. Uh, also a praise from uh, myself. I, I went to uh, Los Altos for a congregational care uh, seminar in Los Altos. Yes, I know it's pretty far. Uh, and so um, I missed the one in Sacramento. That's the reason why um, I went. It's because we got snowed in on the mountain. And um, uh, we went over there. It's, it's a care ministry 
and also it's, it's a way that the conference is bringing more attention um, to mental health, uh, mental health recovery and issues that, that we have uh, not sought out and solved and we're trying to do some work towards that uh, ministry. And so pray, uh, prayers for our conference as, uh, as they uh, keep on building on this ministry. And these are our praises. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, let me say a prayer to bless our, our Easter Sunday uh, for this second Sunday. Let me pray. Uh, Lord, we are very thankful and we praise your name today. You got us uh, up this morning and you woke us up, brought us to church. And uh, the message for today is what now, Lord? after the crucifixion, after Holy Week, after the resurrection. So what, what is your will for us now? And how sh should we live after what we have experienced after the Lent and Holy Week? And so we ask you, Lord, to instill an answer to our whole, into our spirit through your Holy Spirit to strengthen our bodies, minds, and souls to do your will. And we ask you all this in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I ask the church congregation to please stand if you are able as we sing the Lord's Prayer. be seated. The grass withers and the flower fades, the Lord of our, but the word of our Lord will last forever. I come to you with a message. It is titled, Peace Be With You. And I, I would like to acknowledge God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three persons in fellowship, blessed Trinity. I'd like to acknowledge uh, this holy sanctuary. I'd like to acknowledge uh, church volunteers, church staff, church attendees, church members. I'd like to acknowledge our youth and young adults who are the present and future of Carson Valley United Methodist Church. I'd like to acknowledge visitors and friends. Thank you for joining us today. Um, as you've noticed, this Sunday is not snowing. It's pretty hot outside. So. <laughs> I will try to hurry this up so that we may enjoy the sun and that free vitamin D. Um, I come to you with a scripture from the Apostle John, chapter 20, verse 19 to 31. I will be focusing on John, chapter 20, verse 19, and this is how it's read. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. My theme, peace be with you, Carson Valley. One of the challenges that I have faced in preparing to be a pastor for the California Nevada Conference was going through the process of obtaining my, my local pastoral license. And the process takes so much energy just to get to. 
And, and believe it or not, being a, uh, trying to become a pastor is as hard as being a pastor. Uh, I'll give you. I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you an abstract of, of my life. Three years in, in. It was two years of candidacy. Three years in a master's pro, uh, program in Pacific School of Religion. Four years in a bachelor's divinity program. One year of licensing process, which happened last year. Six months in a San Quentin uh, Bible study uh, ministry. Six years of associate pastor of, of a youth program. So if you gather all that up, I got no life. <laughs> so. Um, it, and it's because, and it's because it, you're, you're being called to something. It's something that, that you love doing. Um, being a pastor, and it, it, is, it is a, not only a privilege, but, it, but it's something that I love to do. Um, and if you don't love people, and probably pastoring is not the best thing for you. Um, I'm still in the process of being uh, a pastor. I, I'm, I'm in the licensing stage, and I'm looking forward to a stage which is called a commissioning stage, in which... It doesn't change. Um, it doesn't change the demographics of my job description, or it doesn't change who I am. It just changes uh, just certain levels uh, within the conference. But I will. St it's still. I am the pastor of Carson Valley at the end of the day. Um, but one of the things that I, I have contained in my body, my soul, and my mind is that through this whole process, that my mind has has been pushed to the limit. And then there, is, there are times when you're getting pushed to the limit, you don't know the outcome of, of when people are voting yes or no. And that's one of the, the, the best things about being a, a Methodist is that our church is, is we have a voting system of, of who's going to be our leaders for our church. And, and the laity, which is you church members and the elders, have a balance of voting to induct people to lead this church or to lead our conference or to lead church period. And so when you're in that process of voting, yes, it's kind of like the candidacy that we see on CNN and Fox News. You don't know who's going to be your president. Um, but in a pastoral thing, you don't know if they're going to say yes or no when it comes to a committee that votes you, votes you in and, and um, you, you put your whole reliance on that committee um, to determine if you are going to be a future leader or not. And so not only are you going to seminary and that takes so much of your energy, and then when it comes to uh, the, the time where, where it's time for you to step up to the platform and then you leave it to a body of people to vote you in, it's, it's that yes or no thing. But your faith is relying on one thing, God, no matter what the decision is, still be faithful to you. That, that is the, the whole mindset going into this. Now, the, the thing that, that kind of uh, gave me comfort was peace. Uh, peace um, in, in what the outcome would be during this process. Peace, if I did not get a yes to be a pastor of a church. And then also peace I'm recovering from the decision of either being yes or no. Uh, and so it's just all the anticipation right behind it. And you're leaving, and that is the, the, the beauty of faith as a Christian or as a Christ believer, that sometimes we're not waiting for proof for it to, to, to like con confirm with us that it is going to come true. We just leave it into God's hands. And he determines what's best for us or not. Now, today's gospel is according to John. It speaks on an evening where the disciples are hiding, locking themselves in a room because they were in fear of the Jews looking for them. Jesus appears to the disciples saying these words, Peace be with you, showing them his hands, his side, and the story goes on stating that one of Jesus' disciples did not witness his appearance. And this person is Thomas. Jesus shows up a second time, in which this time, Thomas, in which we call in, in Christian tradition or, or Christian wording, the doubting Thomas, is present at the second appearance of Jesus. Jesus once again says these words, peace be with you. And then Jesus then instructs 
to Thomas to touch his hands and then to touch his side. As Thomas touches Jesus, he confirms, my Lord, my God. Now Jesus goes on to saying these powerful words of faith to Thomas. Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. As today's gospel ends, the words to solidify these events of Jesus and his disciples before he ascends to his father are written. And these are the words of John to reconfirm that these things have happened. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. And as indicated, today's theme is peace be with you. I'd like to uh, determine my sermon into two parts, and that is, uh, number one, peace be with you in faith, and then number two, peace be with you in prayer. Peace be with you in faith, peace be with you in prayer. I'd like to ask you to look at your neighbor, left, right, front to the back, and say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, neighbor. Peace, be with you. peace be with you. In a traditional critique of today's scripture, we, uh, we as the Christian community, we always allude, or, or I wouldn't say you or, or, or I, but there is this misconception when we con- critique this scripture and then we observe the disciples as cowards. Or, or we might look at them and say, why are they hiding? Where is their faith when they were followers of Jesus? Now, as a church community, I want to remind you that, that we come from different backgrounds, upbringings and social locations. And as you sit in your pew with your family and friends, some of you do not know what the other has been through our characteristics in response to certain situations in life is molded by our specific experience in growing up in our own homes or communities or probably you haven't grown up at all, right? So, some of us did not all grow up in a hostile environment or or were given the one-on-one training in surviving a traumatic experience. Uh, some of us are not equipped to deal with life's harshest provocations. And it's, and it's not a, it, it, just because you didn't grow up and it doesn't mean, that, that doesn't mean that you need it. But the thing is, is that that was your upbringing. That's, that's how you were brought up. But let me tell you something, Carson, right, that the resurrection of Christ from the dead is, it, it's not a one-on-one training. It is a liberation of all things that we face in our daily lives, no matter how you grew up. It is a liberation. It liberates us in situations we struggle to wiggle out of. The psalmist tells us this week, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In today's scripture, Jesus appears to his disciples during a time of fear and anxiety. He tells them, peace be with you which is translated in Greek as erin su, defined as at peace, become whole, or to join together, or pretty much saying, get yourself together. Jesus is telling them to calm down, for he is there with them. He goes further to breathing on them, so that they may receive the Holy Spirit. Now, if we look at the encounter of Jesus and the disciples, uh, such as Thomas, for example, Jesus once again says to Thomas, peace be with you, to calm him down. Thomas is able to touch and confirm that Jesus has risen from the dead. Now Jesus speaks to Thomas and his disciples in these words, saying this, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. And then Jesus goes on to speaking about faith. In the words of Reverend K. Ter- uh, Terry K. Anderson, a, a professor of mine, he says, Faith is the substance hoped for and the evidence for things unseen. Faith is the substance hoped for and the evidence for things unseen. 
In, in the book of Exodus chapter 6 to 7, Moses is instructed to go to Pharaoh to free the Israelite people. But Moses asks questions such as these questions. What if they don't listen to me? Uh, or or what, what if I have a... Uh, what if I slur in my speech because I have a speech disability in which he suffered in a speech disability? And then God responds with these words, I will be your mouth and I will teach you to speak. Now, beloved, this is what peace settles, this is where, where peace settles in. That when we question, when we are anxious, when we are confused and facing life and it's all rock and roll, that we forget, that we forget at times that God is with us. Now, your human reaction pushes you to a corner, but your faith in God is what will push you forward. Now, as a wise preacher once said to me about peace, peace in the abs is not the absence of conflict. Peace is calm during conflict. Peace is not in the absence of trouble. It means you can sleep during the time of your trouble. Peace doesn't mean you have no problems. It means you can still come to church in the midst of your problem. Peace doesn't mean that all is going well. It just means you still give praise in spite of everything not going well. God is in control. That is what peace is. Peace is knowing God is with you. He's enduring it with you. He's walking with you but you're leaving it into his hands. You're doing the work, you're experiencing it, but you're gonna leave it into God's hands to guide you in your walk of faith. Peace be with you in faith is knowing God is with you at all times, whether the good times or the bad times. Your faith in the Lord is upheld at all times because you are at peace. You know the Lord is with you. But peace settles in to remind you that he is in control. At times we, we always, there, there's, there's, when life hits us, uh, well, well, there, there's, a, there's a punch that they, they gave it a slang name growing up. They call it a haymaker. Now a haymaker is a punch you cannot see, but you know it's coming, but it just hits you, right? And then you just fall to the ground and there's stars going around and and you're trying to recover from it. And sometimes life hits us like that. And then we at times blame God. We always, we always look at God as always, the bad, always all bad things happen to God, right? But do you remember that God is there with you? Do, you? do you actually know that God is absorbing this pain with you? Do you, do you, do you actually ask, ask yourself, why God? Why, why, did you, why, why, why are you making me go through this? Have you ever asked God at the times that you were hit on the ground with a haymaker of life, God, can you help me up? How do I get up? And sometimes when you don't have peace in your life, you're always doing the blame game. You're always blaming something that you need proof that God is there. Now the psalm tells us this, blessed is the one who does not walk in Step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. But who delight in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Now church family, we at times can be like the disciple Thomas. Always denying, always demanding to see or have proof. We are always trying to blame God about things not going our way. We always try to prolong things that are not supposed to last. We are constantly trying to move mountains and oceans in order to fulfill our will. But is it God's will for you? Do you know the consequences and benefits of pursuing something of your own will before it happens? Now, beloved, as the disciples face their own challenges and obstacles, as followers of Jesus Christ, one thing that is guaranteed today on the second Sunday of Easter is that Jesus is not contained in a tomb. That is one thing that you and I live for every day. That our Lord and Savior is not contained or stuck in a tomb. 
He is here with you and I. He's no longer in that tomb. He is, he is here with you and I. What you go through, God is with you and provides tools. Learn to listen to God and feel God in times of uncertainty. He is not in a tomb. He is here. Peace be with you. Knowing that God is with you, God is in control, peace be with you. When life knocks you to the ground, peace be with you. When your money is not right, peace be with you. Relationship is not going well. Oh, my boo left me, peace be with you. Peace be with you, my friends are no longer, if you have no, you don't have friends that you long, you have committed in a long-term relationship with, or you have no community support, peace be with you. When you have nothing left, peace be with you. God is in control, and he is with you. Peace be with you. Because if he has done it on the cross, and has risen after three days, then there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Peace be with you, Carson Valley. Let your faith be the component of victory in your life that, so that it may be embedded into your belief that we, are, we live in a world that everything has to be proven. But that empty tomb is something this world cannot prove. This on embedded faith. That only through faith you're able to interpret what happened in that tomb. What happened on the cross, and what happened when Jesus was on earth before he ascended to his Father. And this is how you get closer to that tomb, and to understanding what the cross is, and understanding what the resurrection is. Peace be with you in prayer. As we dive deep in today's story, one of the reasons why the disciples recognized Jesus after his resurrection was their constant fellowship with him. The resurrection is not only a time for you and I to celebrate being in peace with God, but it is a time for us to, cel to celebrate with prayer and also with fellowship. Prayer is a time of fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us to uh, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Prayer is also a time to remind us that God is in control and he is here. Prayer is the igniter of peace in the faith, in the face of life as a believer in Christ. One of the last things that today's gospel reiterates in verse 31 is, is these words from John, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. We still have work to do as Christians or Christ believers in a world that thirsts for peace. Turn on your TV, turn on your media right now, this world does not know peace. It's still trying to find it. This calls on us to bring peace, not just within our community of Carson Valley, but to all the world. To bring peace to all who are willing to come to Christ. Through Jesus Christ is what we proclaim. This is what peace is. Many people do not agree with this term. They'll bring another justification. But we believe as Christ believers, along with all other denominations that proclaim the Trinitarian doctrine and those who are not Trinitarian but believe that there is a God that sent a son named Jesus Christ, that Jesus is peace for all. Because Jesus ate with the unclean. Jesus ate with the unbaptized. Jesus loved men, women, and children as his own. And Jesus died on the cross, not only for those who believed in him, but those who will turn from their sin in belief. So, Lord, we ask to give us peace. So, Carson Valley, peace be with you. May you go knowing God will protect you, love you, keep you, and relieve you. Go in peace to your communities, families, and for yourself. This is how you know that peace survives within you. When things, when things happen, you're still at peace, still calm. 
You're not, you're not, you're not going for the, for the warning bell at, at, at the time. But peace is always there with you to, to settle you in times of unsettlement. The last thing that I wanted to uh, proclaim is that uh, my, my, last, my last year in the seminary, uh, it, was, it was one of the most hardest times of a seminary in which it was a transition from in-person learning to Zoom learning, and that was during the COVID time. One of the things that we have, we have been challenged with, especially as Christian believers, is, is our time of fellowship. And so the, during the COVID time, there was a time of uncertainty. When are we going to be able to worship together? And the, these are, 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 this is an example of how Jesus and his disciples, especially his disciples, felt that when is the next time I will be able to meet Jesus. To meet Jesus is to meet in peace. You cannot meet Jesus on your own terms. To meet Jesus, you have to meet Jesus on Jesus' terms. And Jesus' terms is saying to be at peace. Peace be with you, not only with you, but with your family, with your community, and also this world. And peace be with you, Carson Valley, as we go on with this second Sunday of Easter, knowing that the tomb is empty, the cross is our symbol, and that the resurrection has been fulfilled. You and I walk on this earth as salt and light, knowing that a Lord and Savior was crucified on the cross for you and I. And I say this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to go on to our traditional um, ha holy hand sanitizer. Um, I, I told everyone from the first service that I might be related to um, Maui on Moana, the Moana movie, because they don't have a size for my hand, for the holy hand glove. But one thing about knowing peace is when you come to this uh, when you come forward into a to our congregation, if you're new here, one of the things about what we sell about celebrate about peace is our that we're open to anyone who wants to receive communion, and that, that this is one thing that I love about being Methodist or anyone that, that understands Methodism is that you don't have to be baptized or, or or confess that you that that or give me your confession. You come as you are. And this is where, where peace settles, is that Jesus gave us his body, his, his blood, so that you and I can have redemption. It's an invitation to faith, invitation to surrender, it's an invitation to repentance, and also to grace. Let us prepare to receive this mystery of God's grace. If I have been a source of pain, O oh God, if to the weak I have refused my strength, in rebellion I have strayed away, forgive me, God. If I have spoken words of cruelty, if I have left some suffering unrelieved, condemn not my insensitivity, forgive me, God. Insist the comfort from the from struggles that the gospel brings. When you are guiding me into that struggle, forgive me, God. Receive, O oh God, this prayer with tender patience. Lead me to your care. Amen. Hear the good news in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, Father, and Father, and night, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. 
On the night Jesus gave himself up for, he took bread, gave thanks to us, and gave to this, to his disciples and with these words, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this as often as you will in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, and again he gave thanks to you. He gave the cups to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup, is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood for Christ, of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The table is set. Come as you are. We have wafers if you do not want to receive bread. And also, if you need uh, communion to be brought to you, we'll bring them over after.
everyone need communion brought to them? Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for the uh, gifts of uh, bread and wine. We know that at a, in, in living in a world that is so full of chaos, you preach today that peace should be with us. And so we ask you, Lord, to uh, instill peace within us. Guide us, Lord. Instill it in our hearts, our bodies, and our minds so that we may do your will in all that we do, wherever we go, so that it may glorify your name. And we ask you all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask everyone to please stand, if you are able, uh, as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. Third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn in remembrance of me. Good job, everybody. Uh, reminders, more than a few. Uh, birthday wishes uh, for son. So flowers today are from the Brewers in celebration of son Stephen's birthday. Happy birthday. And also the flowers are for, um, I forgot to read this on the last service, um, but it's in memory of Tori Ariella's birthday. Um, also, there's Al Alpine Kids today. 
It is uh, from, so it's bowling and pizza from 3 to 5 p.m. It is not going to be at Silver Strike, right, Edie? Right, we'll get Carson Lanes because Silver Strike is closed. Carson Lanes because Silver Strike is closed. So Alpine Kids today, bowling and pizza, still at 3 to 5 p.m. at Carson Lanes. Uh, we have finance and stewardship meeting this Tuesday at 3.30. Uh, Board of Trustees this Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Uh, we have a church cleanup this, uh, well, next Saturday, April 13th at 9 a.m. to noon. Lunch provided, and there's sign-up uh, seat over there in the fellowship hall. <clears throat> and that is the location where that arrow is at uh, for our future pro uh, pro playground. playground. Uh, donations enthusiastically accepted uh, is, is what that lower portion says so the reason why we have uh, a playground that's if you're if you haven't heard our youth is growing we it, it's just growing and probably that's a place that can calm them down energy wise so <laughs> one other thing there's a UWIF luncheon oh. this Thursday yes a U dot I was about to get to that okay okay, okay. at 11 so I have a U United Women's in, uh, in Faith uh, meeting at Thursday, 11.30, potluck and program. The speaker will be Camille Howard from Empty Bowls. And I, I guess the next slide will be the benediction. Okay, let me say the benediction let you all go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forevermore, church. Amen. <laughs>